one more thing. <laughs> I know I said one last thing, but it's not the last thing because it's one more thing because we're starting a new video. If you watched the last video, this will make sense. If you didn't watch the last video, go and watch the last video because this would be like garbage. Anyway, we're at the gym. It's time to train. I get so many questions now because I have transitioned into a different kind of thing from being a competitive bodybuilder. What's my split? How am I training? How am I keeping up my size and fitness and doing all of these new things and staying injury free as a aging athlete? I know we talk about age a lot, but I do feel as though men in their 30s, 40s and 50s and women fall into traps and bad habits and then get to a stage where they think, oh God, this is me for the rest of my life. So I want to champion health, fitness and physical ability in your 30s, 40s and 50s. So we're here, we're doing push-pull legs. The reason why I'm doing push-pull legs is because I feel that is the best way that I can split up my body parts through the week now and still fit in the extra bits I need to do for the game show. <laughs> like climbing, like sprinting and running and being agile because one of the other things that I do aside from the climbing bits once or twice a week is I'll go and play paddle or badminton with my good friend Zach or the missus to work on that lateral movement. Was I still in the shot? Yep. Oh, I need to work on my <laughs> You're still in <there. laughs> uh, Obviously I need to be able to work side to side and just not forwards and backwards and up and down now. So push four legs is great because I know I'm going to get three solid weight sessions in a week at least. And then if I want to add another push or pull or legs, I'll aim for four or five weight sessions a week and then two or three mobility, fitness, other things across the week as well to get that all-round fitness that I'm trying to get for the game show and for just longevity of life and, and I, I can mix in those things then with the kids, with the wife, with friends. So my enjoyment factor of life has gone up as well. So not only am I staying fit, but I'm enjoying what I do, which is obviously I am a huge advocate of. If you follow me for a long time, you will always hear me say, enjoy what you do. Because when you enjoy what you do, you're gonna make progress end off. So if you can see that we're going to follow session one in the app today. I've referred to it commonly as pocket Jamie because it's like having me in your pocket. I don't know how I fit in your pocket but if you've got big pockets and some of you guys out there got deep pockets. It's sexist isn't it? <laughs> guys and girls have got deep pockets. Anyway if you've got deep pockets you're going to have me in your pocket and I'm going to tell you how to eat and how to train. Um, that's the main thing you're going to get from the app, but then on top of that, you're going to get a library of information that's going to tell you how to create good habits, that's going to get longevity, that's going to get power in your body, that's going to keep you fit and healthy mentally. Um, that's just going to basically extend your knowledge base and have you learning whilst you're using the app. That's the main thing, key benefit is learning. You're not just going to look at this and that's it. You're going to take it home, you're going to build knowledge, you have to pass it on to other people. Without further ado, we have got in the intro workout creatine and iced tea BCAs, my favourite flavour. And the reason why I choose Mutant as a sponsor is because I have full belief in their products. Um, if you've ever tasted any Mutant products, I've tasted loads and loads of things over the years, but Mutant. They just don't have that chemical lasting taste in your mouth. Now I'm not saying there's no sweeteners or anything here because of course there is, but I think the quality of what's in it is a lot higher than some other brands and you can taste that quality. Same with the ISO Surge. No digestion issues, no taste issues, mixes brilliantly. Try it, you'll see. And then the only other thing is this, minties. I think as an older individual, this definitely makes me feel younger because I put this on like the hips and the back. It just makes me feel nice and loose. The only trouble is like, disclaimer, don't touch your genitals after you've used this. Wash your hands because it's going to stick. Right guys and girls, we're going to start with a mid incline chest press on the Smith. Um, so people think, oh, what? they get like all confused about angles and what's mid incline, what's blah, blah, blah. So I would say, Look, that's like, notch number one is obviously flat. Low incline. 
mid incline and mid incline really is like I would say in the middle 45 degree angle which is what that's about anything above that high incline high incline high incline but what you need to do with training is be consistent so if you choose that as a mid incline when you come around to your program the next time that's your mid incline so i would literally put my app here number three on the bench if you're using other gyms then just try and remember whereabouts that angle is and if you can build consistency through your training you're going to make progress right so the good thing about the app is if you're a beginner so this one's a mid incline you're going to get a video instruction from me on all of the exercises so how to set up for this um the form just good good instruction from moi so you feel confident before you go into that set and then it's just about practicing yourself and then even me i've got this guy over here looking at me look at this guy jay he's saying come on you used to look like this <laughs> hurry the hell up <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great feature of the app for the beginners you get shown by me how to do it but then what i would say is things like how to warm up that information will be in the extensive video library so you're going to have a 360 of how to train how to prepare yourself for sets and then obviously how to eat and everything else after as well so it's a full spectrum it's an a to z of how to get results and um, just on that point of warming up as well this is the first exercise of the day i always feel like Warming up on the exercise that you're doing is the best way to warm up for something because that's what you're going to be doing. Set yourself up. I did it with no weight to start off with. I've added a little bit of weight now. I'll just feel the exercise out for about three times, um, adding a little bit of weight each time until I know that's where I need to be for my, for my first working set. And then I'll aim for 10 reps, full failure, um, and we'll go from there. We'll use that as set one. So this is another warm up. warm first working set of the day I want to take this to complete failure um, and that is whereby I can't do another full rep basically with the Smith machine I've got the safety I can just hook it back on I can also put the stops on there to stop it going below the chest so I don't get crushed but I'm gonna log this one in the app this is gonna be set number one There we go so yeah that was failure at 12 i felt like if i went down again i wouldn't get back up so we're gonna log that in there i'm gonna rest again rest time between sets is going to be about two minutes people always go on about rest times like is it two three four minutes blah blah until you feel good i've been doing it long enough now two minutes my heart rate is going to be back down my breathing is going to be back to normal and i'm going to feel strong for that next So six plates on there. I do remember, yeah. <laughs> Three plates aside now. We'll see how many we can get with that. I think my all-time best on this was six twenties and a five, or six twenties and a, a ten each side. Nasty. <laughs> 
software. But that's why we use the term progressive overload because it took me years to get to that point. And although you might look at this and say, wow, how much have you regressed? It's because my training style is so much different now and a lot of my training is for longevity and maintenance that I'm not having to use the silly weights. Like I approach life and training on a risk reward basis. I could lift five, six plates again. I'm sure I could build it to that, no problem. But what risk and what benefit would there be? The risk would outweigh the benefit. If I lift smartly with less weight, I can still build and maintain muscle tissue and I can still attain and maintain and even grow a physique towards my goals, but much safer, especially as an aging individual approaching their 40s. And I keep saying that, but it's very important to know that your body does age and we do have to look after it. If we want a long, healthy life where we can use this one vessel that we've been given, we've got to take care of it because once it's broke, it's broke. And it's not like you can take it to the, the garage to have an MOT. You should be MOT in it, and that might mean blood work, and that might mean massage, physio, stretching, mobility. But we forget to do those things until it's too late. So, look after it is the message. a nice set so warm-ups between or warm-ups after the first exercise drop because we're already warm so I just wanted to feel the weight on this one the app is going to tell you what you did last week or what you did last push session so there's an instant reminder on where you need to be so it's just about feeling that weight having two to three reps and thinking I got eight last time I can do nine or ten with this one or I got 12 last time. I would say stick in the ranges of eight to 12 on your lifts. And when you exceed 12, increase the weight a little bit. So if I'd done a 12 on four last week, I'd have perhaps added two and a half kilos or five kilos, gone back down to eight, build up to 12, add a little bit more, making sure forms tight. So part of my training now involves training quicker because I want my body to recover quicker because a lot of the things I do on the game show are a quick 30 second, one minute bursts of energy, but you have to be on it all the time. And it's high impact, quick recovery, high impact, quick recovery. So train like a bodybuilder and having three minutes, four minutes rest in between sets, I'm super strong, is no longer the overriding goal. I'd prefer to have a shorter rest time, still lift a ton of weight, but get that endurance, that level of fitness that you don't get by increased rest times as well. Sweet, so. Set two, 12 reps, 60 kilos. In the notes section per side, so I know it's not a total weight. And then I've got an option of doing a third set, but the app is great because if you're push for time or if you're like me and you're very experienced and you know you've put maximum effort into those two sets and a third set in the grand scheme of things isn't really gonna add anything apart from fatigue across the workout, skip the third set complete exercise we're on to the next one personal best it says i've uh, logged the like the biggest lift so far in my training program so that's like more kudos to try again to beat that and get that little reward bit of a dopamine hit mid-session and then we're on to the next exercise which is a right so this is a flat chest machine flat chest in, machine uh, flat press boom variation by the way joe can you see can you see the screen uh, just about, see, mate. see that yeah. privacy filter yeah. Never trust a guy with a privacy filter. Hey, never trust a guy who leaves read receipts off on WhatsApp. What do you reckon? Yeah, In yeah, the comments, yeah. Yeah. grey ticks, blue ticks. It, we're on, are you on the fence or you, you agree? You got your read receipts on or off? Off. Sacked, mate. Sacked. See you later. <laughs> Ooh. 
Yeah. Felt good. Reminds me what it feels like to be a bodybuilder again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a good set. Eight reps, full failure. Rest now. We go again. I'm sticking to a two set rule for today's session for time constraints. So, my first set, this time will be heavy for lower reps. I'll take some weight off, which we call as the old term back off. And I'll do more reps. So, I'll do three plates, probably 12 reps instead of eight, there or thereabouts, maybe a few more. The other way to train, I normally do this way earlier on in my sets and sessions because I find the opposite way around whereby I'll do the higher rep, lower rep set, sorry, the higher rep, lower weight set first, and then the lower rep, higher weight set second is a better way to do it because you're almost priming your body. You're warming things up, your risk of injury is a lot less doing it that way. I feel like you need to be super warm to do the principled work set back off approach. Your two sets where the first one's heavy, low rep, second one's lighter, high rep. I hope that makes sense. It does in my head, but it's a bit uh, of a tongue twister. We'll give it a go both ways round and see what works for you. <laughs> increasing overload on the muscles is to add intensifiers and when we talk about intensifiers we talk about extending a set so it can be a rest pause which is what we're doing now which is like rest for 30 seconds back in on the same weight get two to four reps out again if you've done it properly max do a drop set muscle around all sorts of things but if you are in the app you'll also be in a private community facebook group where we discuss all this kind of juicy stuff to give you Extra content, extra value. Right, well, I suddenly have second set, 12 reps on 60. Then we went four for 60. No, 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 it's last set, rest, pause. Boom. Gotcha. So I see today is a push session, which means anything that involves pushing, so chest, shoulders, and triceps are gonna get worked. So this is the first shoulder exercise of push day. Nice shoulder press machine. I've used it many times before. So same principles apply. We'll add a particular amount of weight whereby I feel we can get between 8 and 12 reps. I'll feel it once. And I don't mean feel it. I mean try it out. Lift it. And then I will know if I can do 8 to 12. If I can't, I'll either take some off or add some on, depending on which, where I feel I'm at. I'm going to feel free. Feels nice. And now I'm going to train on it and we'll see where we are. And this is what I mean by feel it, okay? Feel the rep. One, two. I know from doing those two reps that that weight is easy 12. So I want to challenge myself a bit so I'm going to add a little bit more. Knowing this machine, I'm going to add 20 aside, then we'll be playing. Ooh. Do you know what this shoulder press machine is good for as well now, Jane? I'm a, not like a rigid bodybuilder what's anymore. The, what's that? Just a bit of a oh, go on. stretching, mate. Get them hamstrings out there. Yeah? Oh, I'm gonna feel that later on. Anyway, have you saw, have you saw the crepes? Do you reckon it's MJ? Yeah? Where's the Jordan sign? Vivo Barefoot, they've taken over the Jordans because they've got to be. An athlete. Agile. <laughs> Am I out of shot, man? <laughs> 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 honestly, honestly. I'm um, trying to find a trainer that is versatile in the sense of movement, comfort, 
performance. No affiliation again, by the way, but these feel really good. I've done a bit of wall climbing in these, a bit of sprinting, a bit of darting about. I'm gonna beat Zach at badminton tomorrow. Too late, mate. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with training. I mean by intensity there's probably three reps there where most people would have stopped they would have stopped at four or five guaranteed because I've owned a gym for seven years I've been training for 20 years I've seen thousands of people train and thousands of people stop too soon prematurely we need to know how to control control our emotions to stay a long time I'm still talking about training well, honestly, staying in the set, that's what's gonna get you the progress and the results. So be honest with yourself, watch things like this, take it into your own training, be yourself in terms of the weight, you are individual to you, build that weight up. I've lifted heavier in the past, I've lifted lighter in the past, this is where I am right now. Own that, don't let ego take over, and you'll make progress. If we're staying on the uh, thought process, and question of life after bodybuilding. What has been the most noticeable change for me not being a competitive bodybuilder anymore? And I just reminded myself in that set of that very fact. And that is that I can now allow myself to be a lot more relaxed and have fun, have a laugh and a joke inside the gym, but not only inside the gym, outside the gym. Like you got me in here inside of a prep Jay knows this because he used to come filming. He probably used to dread it as well, bless him. <laughs> but that's my work, that's my focus, that's my attention, that's everything. I used to be probably extremely, or I used to come across probably extremely rude to customers in the gym and people like Jay who are trying to do mere service. But now I know I can be more relaxed in here and I can make Jay's job coming all the way from Wales to film me a bit more happy as well. <laughs> Have a bit of a laugh, which is great. And I know that that goes home with me as well. The family notice it, the kids notice it. I am a better person to be around. And I think that's common in any professional sport where you do it to a high level. You have to take it to a degree of focus and um, selfishness. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You have to be selfish to be great at something and I'm just very thankful now that I'm in this position where I can enjoy my training and I can enjoy time with other people whilst I'm staying fit and healthy as well. And that's what I promote inside the app and inside the Facebook group. It's about creating sustainable habits, creating great physiques, but not ruining people's happiness with it. There you go. American 15s for today for the first set, Jay. Ah, round a minute. A lot of set of laterals. <coughs> Oh yeah, laterals, someone's asking me my favourite shoulder press, shoulder press, shoulder exercise, I choose laterals, just because I feel as though works the entire delt and it gets that nice shoulder cap. You can see when you do it, a tie-in from your shoulder to your arms. Can you see it? I can see it. Put a filter on it, Jay. <laughs> Not really. We're against filters. People who know me know that. But yeah, shoulders are built with lateral and isolation movements, I feel. I like the dumbbells because you can just have an element of control and resistance against gravity. Even though tension on the cable is constant, I get a really nice feel off the dumbbell. And that's because I feel as though I do them correctly. Like you see a lot of people throwing dumbbells about. I saw a lady in the gym at David Lloyd's 
last week and she was doing something like this where her shoulders are going back behind her I'm like what are you doing a lot of the problem most of the time is people lift too much weight find a weight that you can control up squeeze up with your shoulder try and reach the outside wall try and reach out as far as possible and then you're going to negate any of this where you're using forearm and bicep and you're going to use the right muscle higher reps as well 12 to 15 to even 20 reps on laterals the shoulders they're moving all the time they're attached to everything around the chest the back the attachment points on the shoulders massive they're always moving so they can take a lot of hammer so higher reps um, drop sets like I used to do something great called up and down the rack so I choose four different dumbbells 10s 12 and a half 15 17 and a half or 20s I'd do 10 10 10 10 reps and I'd go down 10 10 10 so I'd end up doing 70 reps for a ride have a little rest shake it off go again yeah Right guys, so everybody, or not everybody, has the luxury of having a nice quiet gym like I do. So sometimes there may be somebody on the machine that you need to get on, or you might have a little injury, you might not like the exercise. So there's a unique swap feature in the app whereby you can swap it for, hey presto, what we've just done, a dumbbell, a lateral raise. So whilst you're in the gym, Yes, the program is going to give you some rigidity and a plan to follow, but if at any time you want to change it for preference or because someone's on your machine, I got you covered. Right, so chest, shoulders, boxed off, job done. Triceps is the last one for push exercises. Um, I'm going to use bodyweight tricep dips because I think as humans, we should try and or aim to lift our own body weight. So pull-ups, tricep dips, even bodyweight squats, press-ups, anything that involves lifting your own body weight, if you can't do that, you should work towards doing it. That is just a test of, I think, being strong. And everybody should be able to lift their own body weight. If you're not able to lift your own body weight, you're either overweight or just not strong enough yet. You look in the mirror, you know which one you are. Maybe you're a bit of both. Here we go, three sets of this. Triceps are toast, push is toast. We're going home, we're having a post-workout food, recovering. We're getting in the ice bath, getting in the sauna, and we go again tomorrow. guys thank you very much that's a push session from the app jc fit honestly guys try it you will love it it's got me in there guiding you how to train smart how to make progress and how to eat and fuel your body towards your goals amongst all the other libraries of content insane value so check it out thank you very much i will be getting jay in every month so stay tuned for more videos, like the video please, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what you want to see next, goodbye.